Nearpod is a classroom presentation tool that is used to create interactive games and engage your students with questions that test their knowledge, get their point of view, collaborate with others, and to collect general information. There are several ways that you can do this um, through activities such as quizzes, polls, fill in the blank, embedded videos, web documents, and more. Because we are a Nearpod district, we have access as teachers and administrators to use Nearpod. Nearpod runs through all of the mobile devices as well as the Chromebooks that students have. Um, teachers can also use the Nearpod app from a tablet so that they can navigate the classroom without being tied to a clicker. Um, to get started, you can either create presentations from scratch or you can use the existing presentations that are in the Nearpod library. Anyone can participate in Nearpod, your students, um, other administrators, your faculty, and your staff, and these students can participate in a live pace mode or in a student pace mode. To get started, we're going to first log in to Nearpod. We're going to head over to nearpod.com. And then over to your right, you'll see a button that says login. Now right here, you may see the teachers log in, sign up for free or log in, same as administrators. Also a student button, but we're gonna log in here. Um, this is synced to your Google account. So your email address and your credentials that you use for your password are also associated with your Nearpod account. So I'm gonna click here. And because I've already used it today, this screen will pop up for me. This is our sign-in screen. Um, we're going to use our existing account, and the existing account that we have is our Google account. So we're going to select sign in with Google. Instead of going here and putting in your email address and your password, you can just simply click sign in with Google and it will sync your account. If you've never logged in before, it may ask you to authenticate your account. You're going to give it permission so that it can sync your account to your um, to your Google. Now this is my dashboard and my dashboard may look different from yours, especially if you are a new user and you've never used it before, it may look different. My folder currently has lessons that I've used within the classroom as well as folders that I've created to organize my lessons. These lessons here have not been placed in the folders and the folders that you see at the top are folders that I created. So let's do a quick walkthrough so that you can see where everything is located so that you can start Nearpod lessons on your own. First thing we're going to do is look at our menu over to our left. The first button is a join the lesson button. This button is where the students or yourself, if you're doing a collaboration with administrators, would enter a code to join into one of the lessons that has been shared to you. We'll focus more on that later after we've developed the lesson. The next section is called My Materials. Within My Materials, this is where you'll find your lessons, your profiles, reports of completed activities that students have done, and here are sub plans. We're currently clicked into My Lessons, which is why we see everything on our dashboard here. These are lessons that have been created by myself or lessons that have been copied from the Nearpod library. We click on my profile, it will take me to my profile. It gives you statistics of the lessons that you have actually created, um, the kind of lesson, whether it's a live participation or a student pace, the badges that you've earned, such as community leaders or milestone badges. Here you have your specific grade levels that you use the most and the subject areas. You can also click on your picture here to tailor the settings of your profile as well as your lesson settings. I'm going to click on lesson settings. Lesson settings are important because it can change the lesson to the settings to any lesson and um, will help you manage your students' activity within their pod. Each time you change the settings, it only will apply to the new settings lesson codes. So for example, if I created a lesson yesterday and I did not have this button turned on, I would have to generate a new code in order to get this to uh, work for me. So let's look at the lesson settings that we have here. The first section is the basic student settings. This is where you can customize your students' Nearpod experiences. 
this is extremely important, especially if you're working with uh, lower elementary students and middle school students. Um, lower elementary students have some difficulty with typing in their names and middle school students have some difficulty with using their real names. So if we turn this on, it will auto refill the students' names and it will require them to use their Google credentials, which will place their real names that is associated with their Google account, first and last. This way you don't have anyone pretending to be someone else. Uh, misspelled names are just first names and no last names, which is extremely important when you're looking to analyze the data. The next section is the enable the student notes. Um, this is something that's optional, and this will allow students to take notes in their Nearpod lessons, um, any activities, and they can receive a copy of this later um, within their drive. You can turn this on or off, and I recommend this for grades 3 through 12 because they're able to take those notes. The next one is accessibility. We also always want to make sure that we're providing support for those students that need those accommodations. With the accessibility settings, we have the immersive reader. The immersive reader will allow students to have support for any text, and which includes text to speech, language translation, and audio. If we turn this on, those documents or those lessons that are placed there give those students access for support. If it's not on, then they won't have the ability to have it translated into maybe their native language or to have those text-to-speech audio accommodations. I prefer to leave this on for all students so that they have this in their toolbox to use. When we're giving our Nearpod lessons, we have two settings. We have a live participation setting and we have a student setting. The live participation setting is happening in real time and you can customize what you want your students to do when they're using the live participation mode. So for example, if I wanted to have always the default on my screen to default to the student view, I can turn it off or turn it on to set it at a particular view. So if I keep it on, if I'm displaying it on the screen, I'm always gonna to default to what the students can see. However, if I turn it off, I'm setting the default to teacher view and they can see the results of the activities um, as they're taking place in real time. Um, depending on the age, grade level, or activity, you may want to leave this off so that the students are concentrating on their lesson rather than watching the screen to see what their classmates are getting. Um, if it's something where you're taking a poll and you want to see the votes happening in real time, you may want to keep that on. This next one will allow students to edit and resubmit answers. Um, this just basically gives them the ability to change their answers and then resubmit them. Again, depending on the type of activity, if you just wanted them to have that one opportunity to answer, then you would turn this off so that they won't have the ability to edit and resubmit their answers. However, after discussion and you want them to have the ability to resubmit an answer or if they've sat and analyzed it, especially with math, you can allow them to edit and resubmit their answers here by turning that on. After the live participation settings, we have our student pace settings, and this is where you can customize what your students can do when they're using their pod on their own. So these are important, especially if you're giving them the ability to work independently. These can be customized so that you can make sure that they're being accountable for um, completing their work. The first one is to require students' responses and to prevent skipping. So in order for them to complete an activity, they are required to respond to the activity and they cannot skip, especially during a video. So if we have this on, it keeps them on task and um, reminds them to complete the activity. If we turn it off, then they are not required to submit a response and they can skip through um, video. The next one is sharing quiz and multiple question, multiple choice question results. Once a student completes a quiz or a multiple choice question in a video or a game, this will allow them to see the their response or their results of the test. This is good because it provides them feedback and if given the opportunity to do it again, they can go in and change their answers. Again, this is dependent upon the lesson that you're teaching and how you want the answers to be relayed back to you. If it's a one shot, then you want to turn this off. If not, you want to turn keep it on. 
The last one is en enable the collaborate board. On the collaboration board, this will allow students to post during a student paced lesson, and then they will also be able to see posts from other students. Um, this is important because if they're collaborating and they cannot see what the other person is saying, then is it a true collaboration? Um, if we keep this on, they're able to see their classmates' responses. If we turn it off, they cannot. The good thing about this is that the teachers can moderate this um, through the teacher dashboard. This means that they can approve responses, they can delete responses, and they can make sure that the students are staying on task and within the, in the subject. But remember, if this is not turned on, then the students are not allowed to see or not to have uh, visibility to other students' um, responses on the board. We don't really have to worry about payment details because that's not important. And then the managed notifications is just the emails that you receive to your EBR school's email address that's associated with the account. To get back to the main screen, we're going to click on the Nearpod icon at the top. And from after my profile, we're going to click on reports. You will have reports after your students have been an assigned, have been assigned an activity, and have completed the activity. These reports will give you information um, back and feedback as to how your students performed in the activity. This is especially important if the students are um, doing this on their own. So I'm going to click on this lesson here. This was a practice lesson that was held at Glen Oaks High School. It was a live participation lesson. And here you can see the actual report of the students. It was six activities, 24 students, and live participation, and this was the code. I have the option to download this entire lesson report, or I can pick one particular student to get their report. I can also email this to someone, um, maybe an administrator or maybe a resource teacher. However, if I email this, it's going to email the entire lesson report. It won't pick up a uh, particular student. So within our lesson report, we can see each student's name. We can organize it by last name or by first name. And we can also filter it down here by last name or first name. It tells us the class averages overall, as well as individual averages. Um, another important thing, it will tell you the IP address in which the student um, answered from. If I click on um, a particular student, I can get a, a report just for that student, his overall participation, as well as um, the responses that the student gave. If it was a collaboration board, I can view the board and so that you can see what answers were given on that collaboration board. And again, I'm getting all of the responses, whether they're correct or incorrect, as well as the percentage. Here, I can click on Activity Board, and I can do a drop down of each one so that instead of it showing on one full screen like this, I can get it to show individually by clicking on each one. And it'll show me the amount of points, the percentile, and the amount correct. Additionally, it shows me the participation level of the students within the classroom. You click at the top to back to all reports. I'll give you again a listing of all of the lessons that you've created as well as reports, and these can date back as far uh, I don't think they archive them, but they do date back pretty far. I'm in July of 2023, and I still have the ability to see more. You can also search by last name, the school name, or the username. And once we're finished with my materials, we're going to go back to our Nearpod um, dashboard. And our next is our shared libraries. Within our shared libraries, we have a school library and we have our district library. You will not have this button here. I'm on an administrative board, so you won't have the button that says Manage Nearpod. But the school library and the district library are two different things. These libraries are shared within 
the school and then these libraries are shared within the district. So if someone in your school creates a uh, Nearpod lesson and they want to share it just with the people in your school, that lesson can be stored here. I have the lessons, again, mine looks a little different, but if these were all created and shared, then they will be placed here just for my school. District library are libraries that have been created by the district and they are within this library. So for example, I care pre, uh, created a bullying prevention lesson. They have two lessons within this folder. Whereas over here in the math section, there are 1,451 that are created for the district and housed in the district library. To see those, all you would have to do is click on them. They're organized by grade level, K through five, nine through 12, and six through eight. And then further broken down into grade level even more and then by modules. And that's your district library. So remember a school library is just those um, lessons that are created by those people in your school. District library are lessons that are created by the district. Now we also have, I'm gonna go down a little more to our Nearpod library. The Nearpod library has been created by Nearpod. I'm gonna click on that so that you can see those um, different featured topics that we have here. So the Nearpod library has tons of featured lessons, as well as lessons that are divided by grade level, subject area content types. We also have premium contents and different publishers that have created lessons. One of the things I do like about the Nearpod library is that it stays up to date with current events, as well as holidays um, that are approaching and those holidays that have passed. Um, the newest lessons will normally scroll across the top. And then your featured lessons will be here. And then once you're um, done doing that, you can also divide it into grade. So these tabs at the, at the top of your screen will help you to navigate those lessons. So if we look at our featured lessons this month, we have um, the Summer Olympics that are coming. We have different TED Talks. We have a celebration of Juneteenth, World Refugee Day, and more. So I'm gonna click on one lesson. And so within this um, topic, World, World Refugee, that's a mouthful day, um, you can see the different um, lessons that have been created just for that topic. Um, they also have them sorted by grade level. They have one for K through 12, and then it goes three through five, three through four, eight through 12, and then nine through 12. Again, the Summer Olympics is on its way. And there are lessons here about the Summer Olympics. These lessons are geared to grades six through 12. You can um, see the various lessons within. We have a solar eclipse. We have the 2019 Women's World Cup, as well as this lesson here. These are all related lessons, but our main lessons that we clicked on, the 2024 Summer Olympics is here. And these can be added to your lesson library at any time. And then we have the Juneteenth, and we're quickly approaching that holiday. And within that topic, we have various um, lessons. We have videos. In addition to videos and clips, we have the actual lessons. And these are geared K through 2, 3 through 5, 4 through 8, and 9 through 12. So if we decided to use any of these lessons, all we would have to do is to click Add to Library, and these will be added to our Nearpod Library, which will pop up on our lesson screen. And again, we have more featured lessons here. Now, if we wanted to get into a particular grade level, we'll click on grades, and then we have our grade level here. Our feature content still remains at the top, but then we have a, a bigger sorting by grade level. We have from kindergarten all the way to higher ed. I'm just gonna go in the middle, I'm gonna click third grade. So after clicking third grade, you can see that they have over a thousand uh, Nearpod activities here. We have a thousand lessons and over a thousand activities, over a thousand videos. And then you'll see a button here that says in my lessons, I have 93 third grade lessons. And those lessons can be geared from K through three, two through three, three through five, but it includes third grade. I can filter these down by subject. 
and you can pick more than one subject. So I'm going to pick math and world languages. And once I've done that, it's narrowed down. I have 374 lessons, 348 activities, and then um, various amount of videos. So let's say, for instance, I wanted to add the activity uh, time to climb with multiplication arrays and time to climb is a gamified quiz and you'll learn more about that when you're creating your lessons. So if I wanted to use this um, in this math activity, students will practice multiplication arrays using a Nearpod interactive game time to climb. I can look at it first by clicking on preview. Just to see what it looks like. And it's giving you a preview of the questions. Then if I decided to use it right then and there, I can click on add to my lessons. And this will add this to my lesson library. So when I go back home to Nearpod, I can see that this time to climb, here it is right there, has been added to my lesson library. I'm gonna click back on Nearpod library. So again, you can go by grade level, you can go by subject area, or you can go by the content type, whether it's a video, an activity, or a lesson. Last one are publishers. These are published by specific people who have created um, gamified learning within Nearpod. You'll also see a couple of, um, I wanna say, not brandings, but um, character types are brandings, television shows and things that the students are familiar with that will aid in their learning. Here we have Amplify, which is very familiar within our district. So if we click on that, it will also show us the different stories that are associated to our um, Amplify accounts. You can add these to our lessons, and those are already there for you. Again, you can always preview it. And then when you get into lesson creation, you'll learn more that even if you add this to your lesson, you can edit this to add in or take away things that you may or may not need. And click on Nearpod library again. So this is just some of the features that we have in Nearpod. Um, you can also filter it down by standards. Our state standards are already set. You can click on subject area as well as the grade level. So going back home to our library, this again is just your Nearpod dashboard. And so we've gone over where we can find our lessons, how we can change our profile and gain access to our reports, the two different type of libraries that we have, the school library and the district library, and our Nearpod library. The last thing we'll talk about is our uh, top menus at the right. We have our create button, our quick launch button, and then our profile picture. If we click on create, it gives us the opportunity to create a lesson, video, activity, or to create lessons within our Google slide. We'll talk more about the create button or how to create those lessons in our next video. In addition, the quick launch will also allow you to immediately um, quickly launch an open-ended question, a collaboration board, or a timer. And you'll talk or learn about those different um, features as well in the next lesson. And lastly is our profile. We gain access to our profile here. You can also gain access by clicking on your picture. So click on your profile as well as your lesson settings where we can uh, change the settings to our lessons. Remember that if you're doing the lesson settings, the changes to any setting will only apply to those lessons with new lesson codes. So if you've created a lesson and then you just thought about, you know what, I don't want to turn on enable student notes, you'll have to create a new lesson code for that new setting. So if you have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out. My email address is anjohnson at ebrschools.org.